All right, YouTube, it's me, David Harry, your favorite YouTuber and vlogger. And in this video, which is going to be a little slight departure from my usual content, however, that new title, David Harry, Uncut is going to encompass videos like this in the future. So in this video, I'm going to give you three good reasons why they will never be Mac OS on an iPad, okay? Now, just before I get into that, let me just show you something dead quick. That is an iPad mini 6. That's an iPad Pro 2020. That's an iPad Gen 10. That's an iPad Pro 2021. And this thing here is the iPad Pro 2022 and my ma has got me other iPads. Now there's two reasons why I've just shown you all of those iPads. First reason is I am an iPad fanboy, or more precisely, an iPad Pro fanboy. And then the second reason for showing you all those iPads is just to let you know that I am not one of those bullshit channels that just mouths off constantly about Apple products that either one, they don't own, or two, they've never even had their hands on. So three, they don't even really know what they're talking about in the first place anyways. Okay, so let me get into this then. Reason number one, Stage Manager. Now, although so far Stage Manager has come across like a piss poor bad poor man's attempt at ripping off Samsung's DeX system, which is a fantastic system that they've got on their tablets. The problem here is this. Apple, regardless of how bad Stage Manager is coming across, and don't forget, Stage Manager is really bad at the moment because it delayed the release of iPadOS 16, and it also ultimately had a knock-on effect in delaying the release of the latest iPad Pro 2022 and also the Gen 10 iPad. But regardless of all that stuff Apple have been obviously working on this for some time so this is Apple's attempt to kind of bridge this thing between say portable device and desktop so basically ask yourself this question for all this time that Apple must have been working on this stage manager system and ultimately they've kind of failed with it which means that they're going to be playing catch up on that to make it work do you seriously think that Apple have got any appetite to put Mac OS on an iPad Pro? And the answer to that is obviously no. They have set their stall out with what they believe to be their compromise for a professional operating system on an iPad Pro or an iPad, and that is Stage Manager. Reason number two, DaVinci Resolve. So as most of you will know out there, DaVinci Resolve is going to be coming to the iPad soon. Now, that's probably only going to ever be on iPads with the M1 processors, and it may even be likely to only be the iPad Pros, but nonetheless, it is coming. Now, what we are going to get with that is definitely a piece of professional software, finally, on the iPad. I mean, some of us could argue that some of the software that we use ourselves already is professional. However, something like DaVinci Resolve is really super-duper high-end professional and stuff like that so i don't think the argument there is that it is not a pro piece of software now here's the thing do you seriously think that black magic did that porting of Resolve to the iPad in just five minutes? Of course they didn't. So Blackmagic have been working tirelessly for God knows how long in order to be able to port over Resolve to the iPad from Mac OS. And maybe one of the biggest drains for that porting would have been taken into account the UI. Because don't forget, something like Resolve uses mouse and keyboard. And even then, it is really complex with mouse and keyboard. And it also uses controllers and stuff like that that so just to be able to get just that element of resolve to work on a touch interface must have been a massive headache then on top of that black magic will have to have done a lot of porting of certain things within the software to translate over and stuff like that so once again this would not have been a five minute process so the simple point that i'm getting at there is this black magic would not have spent all of that r d time and the finances incurred with it in order to be able to translate transfer a piece of software from there to there and then find out that like Apple were going to release Mac OS on there anyway of course they're not going to do that so that is also a great indicator to tell us that now there are software companies actually developing higher levels of software or higher integration of software onto the iPad with its current operating system so there's no way someone like Blackmagic would ever dream of going through all of that pain for Apple to then just turn around and go ah sod it we're going to throw Mac OS on it anyway and even if Mac OS got thrown straight over onto an iPad 
Pro, which obviously technically it could do because of the actual hardware, it still wouldn't work properly because once again, we have got user interface issues straight away with something that runs on Mac compared to what it would run like on iPad OS in touch modes and stuff like that. So all of that stuff would not just simply magically translate anyway. And then to reason number three, Steve Jobs. Now, whether you liked the guy or not, there is absolutely no question whatsoever about the vision that Steve Jobs had for all of those portable devices that Apple make. And basically, in a nutshell, Steve Jobs definitely did not want to have any of those portable devices crossing over and muddying the line with the likes of any of the Mac computers and stuff like that. And on top of that, he made it perfectly clear as to like, you know, the definition of what those devices were and the roles that they played, not just in like Apple's kind of like line of products, but also in how people would use them and stuff like that. You have to also remember here that as a direct result of say initially the iPhone, the actual influence that Steve Jobs has had on the industry as a like, you know, a big wider industry with regard like portable devices and stuff like that has been massive. So Basically, the whole point to an iPad or an iPhone or anything like that was the fact that they were meant to be really dead simple, easy to use bits of technology and not something that was typically overly complicated like a laptop or a desktop computer. Now, whilst there's going to be a ton of people out there who do not find desktops and laptops particularly confusing or difficult to use, there are going to be, and there is, millions upon millions and millions of people out there who who do have problems trying to understand the basics of like a desktop or a laptop operating system and how to navigate around them and do all the like basic daily things that most of us do find easy. A lot of people don't. And so for those people, the likes of an iPad are perfect. The iPad is just ultimately a very intuitive like bit of equipment, which is not that difficult to use at its most basic level, you know, just touching on, on like, you know, apps and launching them and then using the apps. That's what iPads are really good for. And that is exactly what Steve's jobs had in mind for these things so again the whole thing kind of like dna for the ipad and stuff like that along with the other apple portable devices it was set in stone a long time ago so the point that i'm making with that is this steve jobs will have the last say on this even though he is no longer with us okay so they were my basic three reasons as to why we're not going to see mac os going on to an ipad now i'm just going to finish off here with a couple of other quick thoughts and stuff now i do believe that we will see something that is like an ipad but it's got mac os on it but that will be a completely different product and don't forget we don't get functions of the ipad on the mac either so the macbook here doesn't have a touch screen and i wouldn't be surprised if apple never put a touch screen on a macbook they might do but i doubt it because then it's got the functions that are on the ipad however like i've just said i do think that we might see a product somewhere down the line which is an amalgamation of the two you know it's probably going to be more like a laptop but it's got the functionality of an ipad and it's got mac os on but that will definitely be a different type of product or at least a different name now i know that just blares the lines even more and stuff like that and apple would love to do that type of thing to make more money but they're not going to do it with the individual devices that these are so we do think that they might squash all that together and do something else further down the line now the last thing that i would say here from a personal point of view i don't want to see see the iPad going anywhere near Mac OS and indeed I think Stage Manager has been an absolute joke for iPad as well and I do think that that's something that Apple will live to regret because all it's doing is over complicating like the simplistic beauty of the iPad and the simple fact here as well it is not very effective in order to have something that emulates in any way a desktop OS you need a much bigger screen so when you start plugging the iPad into an external monitor one we're not getting like you know full 16.9 with all the apps and all the things that we can put on it to the external monitor but on top of that the very way that like you know stage manager is working where you don't get the actual full desktop when you're viewing the split apps and stuff like that it doesn't really help but it most certainly doesn't help on the ipad itself 
I seriously think that Apple have gone way too far into something that they're going to have to continue with with that one. But it's going to be something that they are already regretting because of the delays it's caused them and some of the headaches that it's still definitely going to cause them further down the line. Anywho, that's the topic for another one of these videos later. So let me know in the comments what you've thought here and stuff like that. Whether you've agreed with me or not, I would really love to know what other people think about these things. Anyways, I'm David Harry. Thank you very much for watching this video. Take care and goodbye now.